Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's version of Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by Kativ Technologies. I'm Nigel Ambayek, uh, I guess the voice in the sky right now, application <laughs> engineer here at Kativ, and uh, your host for today and all days. Um, as you can see on the screen, I'm also joined by uh, Jose Paredes. How's it going, Jose? Going well, going well. Yeah, so, you know, me and Jose are good friends. We actually started like a week apart from each other, pretty much exactly. So yeah. um, it's always it's always a, a pleasure sharing the uh, the virtual screen with you today, Jose. <laughs> You know. So, all right, so we're going to look at vault data loading today. And specifically, we're going to be looking at um, what's called the auto loader, um, which loads things automatically. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, I think that's what it does. I think so. Um, so, <clears throat> really important, you know, maintaining a data management system, um, kind of knowing where your files are, who's working on them, just making sure you don't lose things right over other people. Um, but one of the challenges with data management system is getting all of your pre-existing data into it in the first place. Um, and that's kind of where the auto loader comes into play. So if you have um, a bunch of legacy data that you want to put into your vault for some reason, um, maybe you need it on some on projects, um, please don't load them in one by one. Um, <laughs> use something like the auto loader to do that. And today we're going to be showing you, you know, what its capabilities are, how to use it, and kind of uh, some best practices, right? I know that there's a there's some people, I'm sure I'm going to get the question, is like, how do I load a super large assembly into my vault? Yeah. Um, and we can kind of go over that a little bit um, when we're moving forward in the session. Uh, like every week, if you have any questions, definitely uh, type them into the uh, GoToWebinar chat panel at any time. I'll make sure to go ahead and answer those for you um, when we get to you know, that Q&A section at the end. So definitely be, uh, be prepared to stay here for 30 or so minutes. Um, yeah and then Q&A afterwards. So I just want to give you all a uh, an idea of how long we're going to be taking today. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and pass it on to uh, to my friend Jose here, and uh, we'll get going with the session. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. And uh, yeah, just to touch on something that, that Nigel said earlier about bringing in your projects, you know, Autoloader makes it very easy to do that, you know, older projects that you're working. But something that we always like to tell our customers when we're doing a, a vault implementation or helping them load data as well, is um, you know you always have to draw a line in the sand is what we like to call it, uh, and that's with older projects. If you have projects that have been done in the past that are you know pretty much finished, you know you're not going to be uh, doing any revisions on them, making any changes to them. Um, you know it might be best to actually just archive those instead of bringing them into the vault. You know, um, at that point, if you bring them into the vault, they're never going to be changed. They're never going to be edited. They're just going to be taking up space in the vault uh, at that point. So, you know, uh, it, it's um, something that that we work with our customers. You know, drawing that line in the sand. But if there are projects that you need to bring in, Auto Loader is definitely one of the best ways to bring it in. Today, we're going to talk about um, some of the best practices that you use there, as well as. Um, going uh, actually going through bringing in an assembly that I have here um, that was actually given to me by Nathan um, I took it out of my vault completely wiped out my vault and now I'm gonna import it back into the into the in, in through our loader excuse me so I'm gonna go in here file loading in vault um, keys to successful uh, file loading using the default folders um, I know some of our customers like to have custom folders at the top level, and I'm talking, uh, I'll show you in a bit, but most of the vaults that we see have a top level folder um, of the Project Explorer, you know, that, that's that dollar sign, and right below it you'll have your libraries as well as one main folder where your CAD data is stored. Designs. Uh, yep, and that, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. The default folder is designs. Uh, we'll, um, you know, there, there is some documentation out there by Autodesk saying, hey, in order for it to work as smoothly as possible, you know, just keep it as default. And that's true. We'll, we'll go over you know, what it takes to, to make these changes. Uh, some of our customers don't like to, to have that top uh, folder to be designed. I'll actually go over how to change that and um, make sure that it, 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 it fits your, necess your necessities. Um, otherwise, what Autodesk recommends is and what we recommend as well is keep the designs at your top level and then build your, your structure below that. So any folders that you need to rename uh, or have a specific name for, keep them under the designs folder. You know, the, the project file itself will, will keep it in the workspace in Inventor as well. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, another thing, data preparation here. And that's, again, that, that line in design we were talking about. Choosing which files you're going to load. If this is a brand new vault, you, you don't want to 
over balloon your vault right off the bat, especially if you're uploading files that you don't need. Um, but pick and choose which which projects that you want to start working on or will be working on in the near future. Yeah. Later on, if it it turns out that you do need to bring in these older projects, what happens at that point is you use autoloader. You bring in those projects, you you um, and you start making changes to them through the vault. Uh, un Necessary files. I have a small bullet point there. That's um, when you're making changes to to some of these files in Inventor or um, or AutoCAD. You, you'll get these random smaller files like .bak files or um, you know past version little folders and files in there. You don't need these to upload them into the vault. So in, before you run the autoloader, go through your data, make sure that none of these are there. You don't need to, to upload them into the to the vault. Yeah, you don't need a backup file if your vault is going to back up for you. That's exactly why. And then the last bullet point I have here is loading in batches. Now, um, you know, if you have large assemblies uh, that you're trying to load, now I'm talking 2,000 parts, 3,000 parts. We're Those talking dozens of parts. Yeah, at least 12. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> like hundreds if not thousands of parts. Yeah. Like, you can you can do that with autoloader it after i think 5k i would say parts if, if you get anything larger than that you know we recommend loading it up in parts uh you know in in batches in, yeah and in, in chunks i guess is the, yeah. <laughs> the most formal way of the saying technical that. term uh is chunks no but um if you're gonna upload massive amounts of files like that do it in batches um, that way, a you're not overworking the, the the workstation that you're using, and b you know you you, you won't run into any issues during the actual upload. Um, so the, the, those are some some of the things here. Another thing we recommend is selecting a workstation that can actually handle the load. Um, this is actually it's it's pretty. Uh, I wouldn't say graphics in intensive, but the, the computer needs to chug along pretty much uploading all these parts, making copies of them, scanning them. It, it takes a lot of work. So choose a workstation that uh, can handle it, not one that's off in the corner that hasn't been used in a couple of years. Choose one that, that you are confident in will be able to uh, open these files as well as have the most recent uh, version of of uh, your software. So in this case, my computer, Inventor 2019, well, professional, professional 2019. All right, let's see here. Good. So now I'm going to go into the actual auto loader here. Um, so um, if some of you aren't familiar with, with how auto loader works, whenever you install Vault Professional Client or uh, Vault Workgroup Client or basically any Vault Client, uh, you get the auto loader uh, included with it. Um, you open up your start menu and you start typing auto loader. It should be one of the top results unless you have any other type of auto loaders in there. But uh, you want to make sure that you're using the most recent version of it. In this case, you'll see that I'm using the 2019 version. I'm going to pop that over to our window here. Yeah, and now Vault is this nice, like, Golden orange, color. gold, yellow mixture <laughs> color. Um, so that's how you know if you've got 2019. So just FYI, 2019, it'll be a little bit different because it's now this color and not blue green. Yeah. So if you're on 2018, you'll see you'll see the blue green. But this is pretty much how it starts up when you open it up. Just going to it explains what it is. Go ahead and hit next. Uh, and we're going to select the folder that we want to upload to to this uh, to the vault. Um, I have mine copied locally. You can do it from the network. Sometimes that causes issues, so we like to copy it locally. Uh, what it will do anyway is it takes the files from your folder and it'll copy them to a temporary folder. We'll see that later on. Um, so again, it, it comes down to the workstation. Make sure that you know it has enough space for all the the, the files that you're actually uploading, um, and uh, you don't run into any issues there. So the first first option we see here is actually selecting a folder. Everything else is pretty much grayed out. So we're going to go ahead and select a folder here. Uh, and as you can see, I kept it nice and handy. It's on my desktop. I have an AVA assembly. So I'm going to click in here. And once you click the folder here, you'll see that it detects the projects uh, that are in that folder. So you know, whenever you're working on different projects, you need different workspaces. Um, 
if you basically select the top of the workspace, there should be an IPJ file for it there that you can use to, to upload. So in this case, it sees the, the IPJ. Um, like I said, it was from a data set that we got back uh, a while back from Nathan. So the IPJ's name is you know a pretty generic number here. Going to hit OK. If for some reason the IPJ that it's picking is not the IPJ that you want to, to use, um, you can always browse and try to find the IPJ that you need. Um, basically, if there is a, a top level IPJ that you want to use pretty much to scan all these folders instead of a localized IPJ, um, you can go ahead and browse for it. But in our case, it's all pretty isolated. It's on my desktop. I'm just going to hit OK. It pretty much searches through and finds any CAD data that's in there. It realized, I don't know if you saw, but there were other folders in there um, that, that were empty. Uh, if it doesn't see any CAD data in there, it pretty much doesn't see it at all. It's saying, hey, I don't need to upload these. And, and that's pretty much what you want. You don't want any unnecessary folder structure created. You don't inside. want the old versions folder. Yeah. <laughs> pretty and, much. Yeah, and you saw it there. It, didn't, it was empty. I cleared out all the files, but the folder still existed. Um, we didn't need that created, so Vault won't go ahead and create it. So just to show you the state of my Vault, it's empty. I'm looking at my Project Explorer. There's no folders in there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll, we'll see when we go through Autoloader. It'll go ahead and, um, and create it. So uh, we'll go in here, hit Next. And you can see it pretty much sees all the files that are uh, found inside of that uh, folder structure. You can see right now that the status of each of the files is uh, that the resolutions are not validated. That's because before we can go ahead and import it into the vault, um, we have to go through a scan to make sure that, hey, there's no errors in these files. There's no errors opening them. There's no missing files, anything like that. Any resolutions that need to happen, uh, pretty much the scan will tell you about. Um, the scan also tells you if you have duplicated uh, duplicate file names in here. If you have two files of the same name, it, it'll go ahead and let you know. It gives you the, the option to go ahead and, and archive one of them, keep them to the side if you don't want to upload both uh, files into your, into your vault. What may happen at that point is um, you can, there's two options there. If you want to go ahead and archive one, run the scan again, make sure that, that no, no links were broken there. Uh, if it passes that test, you'll be able to pretty much uh, upload the files. If removing one of those duplicate files does break, break any of the assemblies, um, it'll tell you as well. Once you run the scan, it'll say, hey, this assembly now is missing this part. But since you know it has a duplicate part, you can actually go ahead and resolve those links right away. So right now, we have 78 files in here that are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and actually change some of the, the permissions here, or some of the settings, sorry, the preferences here. Uh, the big one here is duplicate file management. How do we want these files to compare by uh, you know, file attributes, names and sizes, date and stamp? How, how do we want them to be compared? Um, and then if we want to ignore content, uh, libraries and content center files, you know, do we want these to not, to not be uh, found as duplicate files? Um, we, we can go ahead and use that setting here. Uh, scan option, like I said, 5,000 parts uh, is pretty much that limit that you want to use. Anything up to that, you can run into issues. So if I'm importing more than 5,000 files, uh, Autoloader will tell me. And then these are just folder locations, like I mentioned earlier, for duplicate files. If you do archive a duplicate um, file, it, it'll place it in a specific location. So we're going to go ahead and scan here. And you'll see it pretty much just goes through everything, make sure that everything is um, opening up fine. You'll see that no errors in validation are here, no warnings in the scan. But we all know that's not the that's not the, the the scenario most of the time. Sometimes we have broken links. Sometimes we have you know files that don't open. So in order to simulate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this random part here, going to cut it out of here. And you know this this isn't just something that I fabricated or anything. Sometimes people move files. Sometimes this could be your network drive. This could be, you know, your your local drive. Um, some people can uh, will move a file by accident. You know, I'll place it out here. So now Inventor doesn't know I moved the file. So if I go back and I'm going to go ahead and reselect all of these. 
and I scan again, you already see that I have some errors in validation. Uh, it'll tell me, hey, file can't be found. What you'll have to do at that point is you can actually see the file here or what, whatever else it affects. Looks like it was just a part at the top level of the assembly that it was affecting, but um, you'll also see duplicate files here. But um, what, what happens at that point is you'll, you'll have to find out where that, that assembly is or where exactly it's, uh, it was moved to. So um, in order to fix that, in this case, we know the, the, we know the issue, but um, it's missing here. So we'll have to open one of these this assemblies and try to have it uh, open up normally. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this up. You can open it up straight from Autoloader. That's something nice there. Um, it'll use the the IPJ that that it used originally in um, in the scan. And when the Inventor opens here, let's take a look. Yep. And while we're waiting for Rose, <clears throat> while we're waiting for Jose to do that, I'll just answer one of these questions that's in here. Um, Michael asks, "Where is the Autoloader located?" Um, so the auto loader is located on a workstation, right? It's any machine with a vault client on it. Um, it just happens to be one of those things that it installs when you install the actual client. Um, so there's there's the answer to that. Uh, if you just search your start menu, you'll you'll end up finding it. So let's do this. So it turns out when I copied and pasted the the file, I ended up um, moving over a file that was duplicated. So um, what that meant is the, 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 the link was already resolved at that point. So it wasn't uh, pretty much a big deal. But in most cases, you'll see that um, the file that you pick will break the assembly. You, we've all seen that message before. Basically, when you open up the assembly, it's like, hey, I can't find I this can't file. I can't find this. Please resolve me. You know, it's, it's also one of the main reasons you're switching over to Vault, probably, if you've run into this issue a lot. Uh, you know resolution of files is all taken care of by Vault, uh, you know, it, it, as long as you're moving these files within the Vault client itself. Um, but uh, like I was saying, what I wanted to demonstrate there was um, if you are running into any of these issues, it, it'll show you which assemblies it affects. Yeah, it's not going to let you in, like, it's not going to let you load broken stuff inside. Mm -hmm. Essentially, is is what, this is the shorthand of what Jose is saying. Um, <laughs> if it's broken, it won't put it in. It'll make you fix it before you put it inside of the vault. Exactly. So, um, and to, to reiterate on that, you see this next button here. It's pretty much uh, grayed out. It won't let me advance until I either A, fix this issue, which I can do by scanning again. I'm going to select all, scan. I move the part back, so now it shouldn't run into any issues anymore. It says fine. Whoa, OK. Let's go back. I'm going to select this folder again. Scan. Yeah, we're just messing around with the uh, hey. the folder structure so much that, OK, yeah. cool. So this time, it you know I did nothing else to, to the files. It just had to reload the, the folder there. But no errors in the, in the scan. It lets me hit next at this point. Yep. So now it asks you to sign into your vault. And when you go ahead and do this, uh, it's very highly recommended that you do it as an administrator. Reason being is administrator will have the highest permissions in the vault. And it'll pretty much be able to create folders, create the structure, put the files wherever they need to be without running into any of these user uh, permissions in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as administrator with my very secure password, um, which is blank. And it'll go ahead and load my uh, folder structure in the vault. And as you'll, as we mentioned earlier, the default folder that it creates is that designs folder. Um, we're going to look at our vault, do a refresh here, and you'll see that it automatically creates this folder structure and that IPJ uh, right off the bat. A lot of the times when we're, uh, we're talking to customers, uh, creating an IPJ is something that gets confusing to them. You know, they have to map these folders to somewhere in their vault. Uh, it gets a little complicated there um, doing that. If you're using the autoloader, you don't have to worry about that. It automatically creates that IPJ for you. 
it maps it for you as well. Um, but we have this option here, this AVA assembly. That's the folder that I'm trying to load. Uh, and target location. Basically, where do I want to put it in the vault? Now, if I hit this ellipse here, it gives me one option. So Project Explorer is not a valid selection here. So we're going to have to choose designs. If we look down here, there's something called direct mapping. So um, having direct mapping on, so if I check this, uh, what it'll do is it'll make sure that AVA assembly, which is my top level folder, matches up with the top level folder in the vault. So in that case, AVA assembly will become designs and everything under uh, AVA assembly will become anything under uh, designs. And we can go ahead and show that here um, because if I hit OK, it says, all right, it's mapped directly to designs. Instead, if I hit here, click on design. So let me let me show that again. If you click on here, you click directly on designs, you'll see that it's like, hey, I can't uncheck direct mapping. You know, get a little panic moment there. Uh, all you have to do is click on Project Explorer, click back on designs, and it becomes available again. So if we unclick this, instead of what you'll see is Instead of designs matching up with AVA assembly, designs will actually be the top level folder, and AVA assembly will become a folder structure right below that. So if I hit OK, you'll see that it creates the AVA assembly folder, and pretty much all the files will be uploaded that way. Uh, I mentioned earlier having space on your computer to have these files copied uh, temporarily. You can choose where you want that to be if you don't want it to go to the temp folder for some reason there's special permissions on there you don't want it, you don't want the hassle you can choose your desktop I actually wouldn't recommend the desktop but choose a specific folder that that you may want to use um, you're just hitting the browse button and selecting the folder yeah because it's going to open all of these files essentially what it's doing is what you would automatically doing what you would do to load these files in one by one um, except it's all happening in the background and so essentially it's going to use inventor to open these files save them and then check them in um, but it's gonna do them all at once <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so you know this is the setup I want I want that AVA assembly folder to, to be created so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next here there it goes it's copying all these files to my temp folder making sure that you know it's still validating nothing making sure that nothing changed between the last scan and this scan it's gonna go ahead and hit next you'll get a status here uh, that it completed successfully and it'll show you a summary here of all the, the parts and assemblies that it scanned and it's going to upload. Uh, you'll see some data filters here. You'll see all AutoCAD data, all, only part files, standard content center data. If you wanted to load your libraries first, um, if you wanted to load only parts first, uh, we talked about the limit of 5,000 files. Uh, if it's an assembly that's 10,000 files, you may just want to upload your parts first or, and then your assemblies and then your drawings, depending on, on how large that, uh, that is. But if everything is, is under that limit, like in this case it is for me, you can just upload all of those parts at the same time. Uh, one other neat thing here is you have the ability to automatically create visualization attachments for all of these files. Uh, in case uh, you're wondering what those are, is whenever you go into the vault and you try to uh, look at the preview of a part or an assembly or a drawing, that's actually a visualization file. It's a, a, a DWIF or a DWIFX file that, that's generated depending on, on the settings that you have set up. Uh, and you have the ability to set that up, uh, to create those on upload here. Uh, it's telling you here, hey, if you are creating um, these files immediately, it's going to slow it down a little bit. So It might not be just a little bit, too. It yeah. might be a lot of it depending on a the size of your file uh the, the amount of files that you're uploading and like what they are exactly so you know uh you you may have to make that decision there just to create the, the preview files on you know on demand whenever you need them um you can also or, automate that yeah which is the most awesome part yeah so so you can automate it to, to create it whenever uh you know it's checked in or anything like that those are just settings that you can set up or you can go with the second option here that uh, the message is telling you, you can use a job server. Um, you can go ahead and offload this to a different computer that will generate the, these visualization files uh, separately. It doesn't bog down this machine um, and go ahead and do that anyway, um, but at, at a different time. Uh, and this may be a solution for you anyway. It may be that you, you have 
an amount of users that is constantly checking in files, checking out files, creating new versions, and these visualizations need to be created. But in some cases, if they are created locally, it slows down the user, it slows down you know, pretty much everyone at the same time. You yeah. can offload this to a job server. Yep, if you ever felt the wrath of like many minute check-ins, <laughs> um, that's like the easiest thing to do to kind of alleviate the amount of time it takes you to put a file into the vault. Um, is to not create those visualization files because it's going to create a visualization file for the assembly and then all of the parts. And if it's a lot of stuff, pretty much everything you're checking in, it takes a long time. Yeah. So, you know, for the sake of, of saving some time here, I'm not going to create any here. I don't have a job server set up myself. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and upload these files. So I'm just going to hit the upload button here pretty much goes through every single file and it tells you the status of it. If you do need to, uh, you know, have these these reports or, you know, you want to make sure, hey, I uploaded this, this assembly, I want to make sure that I keep track of all the assemblies I'm bringing in, all these projects, you can go ahead and view this report and then uh, print it out or export it to wherever you need it to be. It'll pretty much tell you exactly how long it ran um, and the status of each of the files. That pretty much finishes it, uh, up your upload. In this case, like I said, it was a small uh, assembly. I had it already in there uh, at some point. Going to hit Done. And we're going to go back to my Vault Professional here. Um, going to go into my designs. You'll see that AVA assembly folder was created, data folder, these parts here. And it's yelling at me because um, according to the IPJ, it was looking at it, uh, it, was looking at it on my desktop. Uh, that red ex uh, that exclamation mark I can just get rid of by doing uh, a get here, and you'll see that it, that it turns uh, white again. So you know it is it's just um, a status that that it puts on it afterwards. But what I'm actually gonna do here, and I said I would do it, is I'm actually gonna go into my Project Explorer and go ahead and start deleting all these things again. everything from here. And I'm going to delete them because, uh, again, if you're doing this, you're, gonna, you're going to have to have admin uh, privileges anyway. So I'm going to go into my options, and I'm going to show my hidden files. And you'll see that I deleted all the folders. I deleted the IPJ file in there. But there's still one file in here that's available. And it's a buu.xml file. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a get of that. And I'm going to check it out. So I'm going to hit OK. Then we're going to go to our working folder here. And what I'm going to do actually here, and uh, I mentioned earlier that by default, it creates that designs folder. It creates that designs um, IPJ. If, you know, you for your company, you wanted to say Kativ or you wanted to say, let's do AVA today. So. What you'll need is actually this this buu.xml file. Um, you'll see some some lines in here, and uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, um, or any or someone at your company doesn't um, feel comfortable doing this, you can give us a call. We'll, it, it's pretty straightforward here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and edit this using Notepad plus plus here, and I'm actually going to make this uh, AVA. Let's say I want AVA to be created in there uh, instead of uh, designs. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out here. And we may change this locally again, but we need this file to be inside the vault. So I'm going to go ahead and check it in. Hit OK. So now the version inside the vault says AVA has to be the 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 IPJ that gets created. So I'm going to run Autoloader one more time. Again, we come through here. We select our folder, select our project, hit Next. We're going to go ahead and scan all these files again, make sure that they can open up properly. Hey, they're still not broken. Hit Next. Sign in as administrator again. That's an important part. You need those permissions. And this time, come on. You don't need to sign in as the actual admin user. You just need admin rights. Yep. So 
like I said, this time it created the folder as AVA instead of designs. And if we go into our Vault Professional here, I'm going to refresh here. You'll see that AVA folder and AVA IPJ, um, you know, and everything will be downloaded or uploaded under this file structure, folder structure now. So it's just, um, you know, something that you can change real quick if it is something um, that absolutely has to happen for your company. Um, then you, that's a way you can change it. Otherwise, like I said before, we can we recommend just creating that folder structure beneath the designs folder. You know, not everybody feels comfortable editing in no plus, uh, Notepad plus plus, or anything along those lines. If if um, you know keeping your folder structure under designs is fine for you guys, then that be uh, that be recommended. So we're gonna come in here back. Um, so we went over folder selection in Autoloader. Um, you know, picking where uh, we're getting our assembly from, where we're placing it in the vault, scanning those files, making sure that there's no broken links, uh, duplicate files. Uh, and then if we do find those broken links, let's go ahead and fixing those up through Inventor. Uh, as long as, you know, if it's a missing file that, that doesn't break any of the other assemblies, it'll only show up as that single file. You'll have to find it and place it in the correct location. If it does break other assemblies, uh, it'll let you know in auto alert, like uh, telling you, hey, this part is missing, but it's also affecting this assembly. It's also affecting this assembly. It, it'll go ahead and let you know, uh, and it won't let you continue until you either remove those assemblies from the list or fix the, the broken uh, links and scan again. And then we went over changing that default folder. Again, a recommendation says just keep it as designs with your folder structure underneath it. Um, but if you do need to change it, we went over changing that buu.xml file uh, to get that through. The boo file. The boo file. Um, but that's pretty much autoloader. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, depending on the size of of your assemblies, it might take a little longer than the two minutes that it took me. But um, if, if you know, if you have any questions on that, we're always here to to help Lifeline, Nigel, I. So again, thank you all for being here each and every week. It is the community that is keeping us doing um, all of these, you know, moving forward. So if you have any suggestions, please let us know in the after webinar surveys. Uh, it is things like that to help us drive what topics we do next. So if you see something or you want to do something like really, really fast, um, please type it in there. Uh, that'll help me decide what I want to put in the schedule for the future. Or just give us a call, um, shoot us an email, and uh, we'll see it that way as well. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week for another session of Autodesk Virtual Academy <laughs> brought to you by Kativ Technologies.